gonna work out. And it did. We ended up having a killer year. So speaking of things that don't phase you, do you know anything about what happened with Connor or allegedly happened in Ireland with hitting a mob guy? No, but I don't think it's true because no. if it was true, it'd be big. Connor can friggin', you know, Connor can walk down the street and it's big news now. Mm. You know, if, if Connor, if this was true, I, I just have to believe it would be off the charts crazy. Did, did you call him or call Audie or anybody at all to no. find out about that? No. If and it's I, true, we'll end up finding out. I don't chase, I can't chase all these things around. If they're true, the, we'll get it figured out and we'll go from there. Does it concern you though, you know, you had a history with uh, wise guys back in Boston. Yeah. The fact that allegedly one of the guys he hit was in the mob. If that's true, that's probably not a very good thing for Connor, right? And uh, Yeah. Uh, can't be. It can't be a good thing for Connor. Well, can you, can you but you never know. I don't know how that stuff works among, you know, I didn't. I didn't know any of those guys or, or, or any of that stuff, but it can, I'm sure it can be worked out too. You know, uh, didn't uh, you know Jake Lamotta's brother beat the shit out of a wise guy too, and they figured it out. I was gonna say I mean, the, the one we, we don't know about that one yet. The one we do know about, we haven't heard you guys talk about or off a comment mm -hmm. on, was the issue in Bellator where he jumped the cage, pushed the referee, slapped the employee, the Bellator employee that's trying to get him off the cage. I mean, can you give us an update? I'm just kind of where his head is, where you guys stand, I mean, is he going to face any punishment for that? Because, I mean, yeah. it seemed like pretty inexcusable behavior. Listen, the the punishment, you know, he was being dealt with by, by the head of the ABC. And we were going to fight him, we, you know, regardless of what Adi says, we were working on a fight for him at the end of the year. And he's just not ready. I, listen, we're still in that, we're still in that, Connor might never fight again. Guy's got a fucking hundred million dollars. You know, I got guys that made less than that and fucking were lawyers and went to school their whole life and quit working. Right? When you go to school your whole life to be a lawyer and you're a good lawyer, you make a few bucks and you're done. Guy sitting home every day watching fucking cartoons or whatever he's doing. I don't know. You know, Joe Silva doesn't work anymore. You know, these guys make money and that's it. But how to deal? Fighting's the worst. Fighting's the worst. Try, try to get up and get punched in the face every day when you got $100 million in the bank. You know? Uh, money changes everything with a lot of people. So, we'll see. When you talk with him, what is, what's the sense that you get with Connor? To every time you talk to Connor, it's, you, you don't know. Who knows, you know? Um, he's, uh, he's a very unique individual. I love the kid. I love the kid, man. I think he's fun. He's... he's uh, He's definitely, you know, when we talk about guys, if you look at all the money Connor's made, there's guys who always bitch about money and I should have more money. Connor can't be paid enough money. Connor's worth every penny and more, you know? Um, and the other thing with the Bellator thing, he's a young, rich kid who is a god in Ireland, you know? That's, that's not the healthiest environment either. It's, it's just... It's all part of, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember in the very beginning with John Jones, you know, there's no doubt the talent was there. I used to go, the guy's talented, but he's, he's young and he's rich and he's the king of the world right now. Hopefully he can keep it together. And that was way before any of the crazy shit started happening. And, and there it is. It just, this is, it happens. So, so uh, and, and, and what's weird is it happens more in this sport in fighting, yeah. in the fighting business, than it does in any other sport. You said it, I think he won at what, the title 129, John, right? Yeah. So you said it 129. Remember specifically, you said now we'll, now we'll find out. And you you used the phrase Klingons mm -hmm. with, with him at that press right. conference. I remember you saying that. Klingons are the ones that drag you down. And so the, the, que the question with Connor is it doesn't seem to be Klingons so much as Connor himself. That's Connor's got himself. a lot, too. I mean, when he travels, He's got friggin' people for days with him, you know? And uh, when you make that kind of money, you're that famous, and you're a professional athlete, and you're gonna have an overload of Klingons. And, uh, yeah. Let's say he never fights again. Do you, do you, in retrospect, say, we messed up making that Mayweather fight? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> I mean, the kid made a lot of money. That's, 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 what, that's what we're all here for. We cut through all the bullshit and all this. We're all here to make money. You're sitting in this room right now to make money. That's why we're all here. And, and we had an opportunity for him to go in 
and, and, and make more money than he's ever made in his life. I wouldn't change a thing. I knew going into that fight, because of that fight, he might never fight again. Well, when we wrote it, you ripped us for that. What do I rip you for? Oh, that, he, he's absolutely fighting again. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I never said he's absolutely fighting again. Uh, Even before the fight, I said, this could be the end of him. Who knows? He might never fight again after this. He's absolutely fighting. I never said that. I, I said, listen, know. he's telling me. All I can go off is what he says to me. He's telling me that he's absolutely going to fight again. That doesn't mean he's going to. Right. No, no I, I agree. Right. I mean, I agree with what you said. Right. But did he express, so you were trying to do a fight at the end of the year for him. Was he expressing desire for that? Yeah. He was. Honestly, with no bullshit, this kid's always been down. If, if you know, we need him to jump in and he has to fight, he's always will, will jump up, fight, fight anybody, anywhere. He's that kind of guy. He really is. That, uh, listen, for me to have so much respect for a guy like Connor, it's because he's the absolute total package. Right. This kid will literally fight anybody. Um, you know, he's actually not that hard to deal with, to be honest with you. If he could show up on fucking time, he'd be perfect. You know what I mean? Other than that, the kid would be perfect. You know, is he cocky? He deserves to be cocky. The kid's incredible. That being cocky is part of this business. If you're not cocky, you're probably in the wrong business. You know, you have to believe in yourself the way that this guy believes in himself. I love all of that stuff. He's hilarious. He's, he's got, like, comedic timing. Um, you know, he's fun. He's fun to watch fight. The whole deal. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't feel that way about him if he really wasn't that type of kid. But he really is. He's really not that hard to deal with. When do you have to start making a decision on his title, though? You know, you got Ferguson saying defend or vacate. And you're saying, you know... Maybe he Ferg Ferguson fight. has no business to talk about anything. So, listen, we ain't, we ain't taking any direction from Ferguson, okay? Yeah. But does it, I mean, do you have to start thinking about, oh, he's got to get in there and defend this belt, or yes. we got to pull it off of him? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, you, have to, you have to want him to fight again, don't you? I mean, you, of course. You had that conversation with him and, and try to encourage him and say, come on, Connor, let's go. Let's do, you know, do you know how many people, including Ioli and all kinds of other people over the last... You know, however many years have been telling me, George St. Pierre is your biggest star. Don't tell me you don't want George St. Pierre to fight again. I sure. Told you, I said Rondo oh, yeah. was the biggest star. Well, I'm just saying, whoever don't it was, say, I'm, I'm that. throwing GSP out there. So, you know, everybody always says to me, you have to want this guy to fight. You got to want this guy to fight. I don't want anybody to fight unless they want to fight. This isn't a business where you can just make people fight. You either want it or you don't. You know, and that was my big thing with GSP. He wasn't acting like a guy who really wants it. At the end of the day, I'm going to run this business with or without anybody. You know, it's just, it, it, it's, if Connor wants to fight again, absolutely we want Connor to come fight. But if Connor walks away and doesn't ever want to fight again, it's part of the game. At what point do you say uh, defend or vacate the belt? Well, we need, we need to figure that. We're, we're, it's, right now, it's not with him. It's not about defend or, or vacate. We're working on a new deal right now with him. And where does it could be March, it could be April, or, or yeah. how close are we? We, we got to work out this new deal. Yeah. Did you get points? Huh? Does he get points? <laughs> Did Jordan get points? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, just to follow up on Connor, though, you know, when you said that uh, he, he's your friend, like, and I think, you know, Connor and Ronda are different maybe than, say, Jones was when Jones was on top, right? right? Where you had a different relationship with them. So just because of the personal relationship you have with him, do you, don't you feel obligated or in some way don't you want to call him and say, dude, what the fuck's up? And, like, you know, you're getting yourself the Klingons and whatever, the speech you made to John Jones in public. You can't. To make to him in private? You can't. No? You can't. I, I, I've learned over the years you can't have these conversations with them. They're all grown men and women, mm -hmm. you know? To be honest with you, the only one who's really ever listened to me in fucking all these years is Chuck and Rhonda. And those are really the only two that would actually listen to what I said. Rhonda was going to get a sleeve. I said, no, you're fucking not. Get a what? <laughs> sleeve. Tattoos all the way up to her fucking neck. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not getting a sleeve. Listen, tattoo yourself up as much as you want when you retire. Do not get a sleeve. And she listened to me. I told Connor, stop doing it, and he goes, you're fucking old. That's why you don't like him. <laughs> I said, you think a fucking screaming gorilla on your chest looks good? He says, you're too old. You don't get it. I said, maybe you're right. You were good on that tattoo thing. You got more than we, we thought you did. 
Yeah. When, when are you getting a tattoo? Never. <laughs> you know, you Th- think about this. What? Everybody in this room right now, what do you love so much, other than like your kids, right? Would that you would tattoo on your body? What the fuck would you tattoo on? I'll buy a T-shirt in every color and I'll wear it every day for 30 days. I guarantee you, you get tired of it. You know what I mean? Imagine if back in the 80s I got a tattoo. The fuck would I have on me right now? Right? <laughs> Shit that I'm definitely not into right now. I can promise you that. That Patriots logo. I'd have right the there. Culture Club logo on my fucking back <laughs> or something, right? Hell no. You know, you spoke about uh, the uh, people mentally getting out, uh, you know, 